So you just completed your very first teacher interview and you were wondering, what should I do after I've completed an interview? You're scrolling social media, you're finding all these ideas, and you're really looking for step by step on some ideas on how you can not only remind the district that you're still interested, but you're curious about when you should follow up and everything in between. Well, today I'm gonna to be talking about five things you should do after your teacher interview. So make sure to stick around because you won't wanna miss this. Hey, teacher bestie, my name's Helena and I'm the creator of the Present Teacher Podcast. I'm a first year teacher coach. And in this podcast, you are gonna learn everything from simple, actionable classroom management, social emotional learning, and teacher wellness strategies. You know that impact you wanna make in the classroom? Well, we're gonna make it happen here. For those of you that are new here, hi, my name is Helena. I'm the creator of The Present Teacher, and I have been teaching now for six, seven years now. And not only have I applied for my first teaching position, I actually transferred districts and switched districts after three years of teaching at my first district. And I've also been in several hiring committees. So with all of this experience combined, I can pull from my background to kind of give you some pointers on some things I've either done or seen other teachers do to help them stand out following an interview. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do after an interview is you're going to want to reflect on how the interview went. When you reflect on how the interview went, you can get clear on what went well for you so you can continue doing it next time that you have an interview. And then you can also figure out what were some areas that you felt like you weren't as prepared and how can you switch that and better prepare for that next time so that way you don't run into that problem later. So with that being said, here are some different questions to ask yourself when it comes to reflecting on how your interview went. I personally like to have my journal slash planner. It's a happy planner. And what I like about my happy planner is in the front, I have this section where I can plan. It's my planner. Essentially, I have my calendar. And in the back, I actually add extra paper so I can journal in my planner. So it's all one notebook. But essentially, here are the questions that I like to reflect on following an interview. The first one is what went well? It's important to figure out what went well so you can repeat the same things next time and just to kind of debrief and get some good clarity on what your next steps might be or some things you want to repeat for your next interview. So what went well? Did you do really well at your mini lesson? Did you give really good answers throughout um the interview. Did you ask really good follow-up questions? Take some time to jot down some things that went really well for you. That way, next time you have your interview, you can repeat those things. The second question you might want to ask yourself is, what can I improve on for next time? Interviewing is one of those amazing things where it's essentially figuring out how to get better and better each time you do it. And the only difference between you and someone who's done it four or five times is they figured out what works best for them. So with that being said, think to yourself, what are some areas that didn't go so well that I can improve on next time? I have a great example for this. During my first round of interviews, I flew from Oregon to New Mexico for two in-person interviews and I forgot my lessons like this, the supplies and the activities for my lessons at home. So during the hour drive to my interview, I actually had to remake a lot of it in the car, which was super stressful. Needless to say, next time I can make sure to not only double check that I have my resources for my mini lesson, but I might even bring extra. So take some time to think to yourself, well, what are some areas I can improve on for next time? Maybe you didn't write any questions down ahead of time to ask them. So at the end, it was very awkward. Maybe you, your answers to your interview questions were really short. And next time you want to list out some story ideas um, that explain further the answer to your interview questions, but take some time to think about what are some areas that you can improve on for next time. That way, each time that you interview, you just get better and better each time. The third question or thought you might want to consider thinking about is what can I continue doing in the future? This leads a lot to the first question I mentioned, but 
What are some things that worked really well for you and helped you stand out that you want to replicate next time you do it? Were you really good at leaning into your it factor? Were you really confident this time because you did X, Y, and Z? Make sure to take notes for that later. That way later you can refer back to these and make sure that you implement those next time so you can have similar results the next time you do it. The next question you might want to consider asking yourself are, what are some green flags about the district that you applied for? Now, when I first applied for my first teaching position, I actually got offered the job at two different interviews. So I went to two in-person interviews. One was at a charter school and one was at an independent school district. And both of them offered me the job during the interview. And so what I ended up doing is I ended up doing this reflection I mentioned right now. And I took some time to jot down the answers and some things I really liked about the answers to the questions I asked the district to kind of help me weigh which district I preferred to work at more. So take some time to jot down for now and you might get a similar situation where you're tied between two districts and you're not sure which one you want to go with. Having this thought out and, you know, written down ahead of time is really going to help you in case you have that situation. But what are some green flags or great things that you like about that district? Were they very supportive? Did admin seem very considerate of others? Did you seem like you would have a lot of support? Were the staff super friendly? What are some major makes or make or breaks for you for working in a district? And make sure to take note of some things you really enjoyed from that district. On the other hand, the next question you might want to ask yourself is, what are some red flags about the district? Did they not have a very robust special education department? Do they not have a very robust support for new and first year teachers? Make sure to take notes of these. Maybe their salary is substantially lower. Maybe it's going to be a 30 minute, 40 minute commute for you. Make sure to take some time to jot those down because again, if you have a tiebreaker or you get offered multiple jobs later, you can refer back to these notes later to help you come up with a decision. So we just talked about the first thing you should do following an interview, and that is the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to reflect on the interview. Typically, right after an interview, I'll sit down at a coffee shop or at home, and I'll take some time to answer these questions that I mentioned earlier. The second thing you're going to want to do after your teacher interview is you're going to want to write thank you cards. Now, what I've learned to do is I actually buy blank thank you cards, and I put them in my car right before my interview. It's one of the things I actually bring to the interview. That way, immediately following the interview, I can write out thank you cards to give to the district seven days after or a week after my interview. And that way, while the names of everybody that I interviewed is still fresh in my mind and the interview is still fresh in my mind, I can write those thank you cards out now and I'll seal the envelopes and then I can deliver them a week later. And I don't have to sit there wondering, oh, what was that person's name? It's still fresh in my mind. Now, here's some things that I recommend writing in your thank you card. You can write down, especially the names of the people who interviewed you make sure to include something member memorable. Maybe the district and you really agreed with a certain topic. Maybe the district was really passionate about something. Make sure to take note of that. So it helps remind them of who you are, especially if that district has been interviewing several different candidates. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to thank them for the opportunity. Now, there's a couple different ways you can go about this. You can either do a blank thank you card or you can go about doing like a thank you email, whichever is best for you. I like doing a thank you card because I like being there in person to deliver the thank you cards, even if it's just to the secretary and to nobody that was in the interview. That way, it's one more time that they're seeing my face and that I, they're being reminded of me. So in depending if you're doing a thank you card or a thank you email, if you're doing a thank you email, you can make it even longer by talking about thanking them for the opportunity. Um, something you are impressed by or that you enjoyed or mutually agreed with. You can highlight their dedication to their specific values and mission that aligned with your passion. So for example, maybe the district was really, um, really passionate about being inclusive to diverse learners. And so you want to make sure to include that in your thank you card and then or thank you email. And you can mention 
how you feel like your qualifications or experience can help them with those values or that mission. And if you want kind of an example of this, I do have the Ultimate Teacher Interview Bundle where I actually have a template where it's already pretty much written out for you. You just have to write fig fix the blanks or fill in the blanks. But I have a thank you email that you can fill out and send to them. But if it's a thank you card, simply putting their name, something that was memorable and thanking them for the opportunity and that you look forward to hearing from them soon is really considerate and something that not a lot of candidates are doing and it'll help you stand out from others. So as a quick recap, the two things we talked about so far that you should do following an interview is one, reflect on how the interview went so far. Number two, make sure to write thank you cards to the people who were in your interview, especially since oftentimes teachers and admin are possibly staying outside of contract time to conduct these interviews. So you want to thank them for taking time out of their busy schedule to sit in on your interview. The third thing you should do, and I feel like it's very easy to skip this step. I know I was eager to, and I just wanted to go straight into work, and that was to celebrate. Make sure to take some time to celebrate your accomplishments. I understand that interviewing, trust me, can be really intimidating, and I can be really nerve-wracking, but the more I've done it and the more I sat in on different interviews, the more I realized that it's nothing more than like a coffee chat with a friend, getting to know them, and seeing if it's a good fit or not. So make sure to take some time to celebrate your win, celebrate the success. You are one step closer to having your very own classroom or transferring to a different district where you are going to be in a different classroom that may be a little more aligned with you but make sure to you know treat yourself treat yourself to maybe listening to your favorite music dance around celebrate call and you know debrief about the interview with someone that will celebrate with you treat yourself to a cup of coffee something like that but make sure to enjoy the accomplishment you've made so far because it's so easy to skip over it and move on to the next thing. The fourth thing that you're going to want to do when it comes to after a teacher interview is you're going to want to do a follow-up email. Now, I get this question a lot and I definitely see it a lot and that is how soon should you follow up with an interview? I get it, you're super excited and you don't want the district to worry or forget about you and you're also really, really you know, thinking about whether or not they chose you as the perfect candidate to work with them. What I recommend doing is following up after about a week. After about a full week, that's when I like to follow up with an email. So in my emails, typically how it goes, um, I will, you know, you can either do the thank you letters in the email, you can just do the follow up email one or the other. They're pretty much like laid out the same way if you do like a thank you email but it's just a good touch point to remind the district that you're still interested and to thank them one last time so for that I always take the time to thank them for interviewing me and again this is going to sound a lot like thank you cards or thank you emails you can choose one or the other you could do both and then I make sure to point out something that I remember from the interview about how passionate the district was about x y and z and then I'll mention how I my experience can help them achieve that goal and how I'm eager and passionate about the same thing to show how aligned we are. After that, I will mention that I look forward to hearing from them and that I'm. if they have any questions, feel free to reach out. Now, when it comes to this follow-up email in the template, Ultimate Teacher Interview template bundle I mentioned, I actually have three different email versions. So if you want to check that out, I'll make sure to put a link in the description. That way you can just fill in the blanks and you don't have to worry about wording, but essentially all the emails that I write include those main things when it comes to following up after an interview. And I like to send them anywhere from about a week to a week and a half after an interview. The final thing you should do after you you complete your teacher interview is to either A, keep busy or B, decide to continue looking. Now, I know that when you're waiting to hear back from a job, time moves extremely slow. So it's very, very, very easy to check your email, to check your phone, to constantly wonder if they're going to call you back or email you or reach out to you at all. A way to make it go by faster is to keep yourself busy. Maybe go, you know, out in the mountains, go to the library, go shopping with your friends, keep yourself busy so that way time flies by faster. 
And then if you're not quite sure whether or not that this district district might be 100% the one for you, you are always more than welcome to reach out and to apply to other districts that might be aligned with you. That's another way to keep busy. You'd rather have more than one option when it comes to applying to or to working as a teacher. Now, I'm not saying that you need to apply to districts that are completely misaligned with you. And, you know, you can already tell they're going to be just an absolute nightmare to work with. That's not what I'm saying at all. But feel free to continue researching for districts that are going to be aligned with you and feel free to apply for those jobs. And it's perfectly fine if you have, like I mentioned, two different job offers to use the green flags and red flags, figure out which one is going to be more aligned with you. And you can refer back to that reflection after an interview to see whether or not which one you felt better about afterwards. So that wraps up the five things you should be doing after your teacher interview. The first one was make sure to reflect on how the interview went. That way you can use everything you learned in the upcoming interviews. And if you were to ever have a tiebreaker, you have better notes on which one you prefer working for. Second thing, make sure to write thank you cards for the people that attended your interview. I like to have these thank you cards and just blank ones in my car so I can fill them out fill them out immediately following my interview. Third thing, make sure to take some time to celebrate, treat yourself, and you know this huge accomplishment that you've made as applying for your teaching position. Fourth thing, make sure to send a follow-up email about seven days, about a week after your interview. And I gave you a quick template and a breakdown of what I like to include in mine. And then number five, make sure to either keep busy so time goes by faster, or make sure to continue looking for other jobs if you're not 100% sold on this interview or you don't have necessarily a good feeling about it. So that's all I mentioned today about interviewing. If you wanna learn more about interviewing, I have a ton of content from past weeks where I dive into deeper in regards to the interview process, including the top 10 teacher interview answers and questions that I recommend practicing for an interview. So make sure to check that out if you haven't. And in that one in particular, I like it because I give sample answers to those questions. If you wanna take it a step further, make sure to check out the Ultimate Teacher Interview Guide. In that guide, I list out the top 10 questions I get asked about interviewing and I break down my answers, plus I link to additional podcasts and YouTube videos that you can refer back to to get the, a deeper dive into my answers. If you want to take it a step further, make sure to check out the Ultimate Teacher Interview Bundle that I mentioned. In that bundle, not only do I give you a sample cover letter and resume templates, I also give you examples of what mine looks like, and I also include things like the follow-up emails I talked about, thank you, car um, thank you emails, um, resignation letters, everything in between, everything that you would need for an interview, I try to include and do it for you. That way you just have to kind of plug in your info and they're already done for you. So make sure to check that out if you want help with stuff like that. And then if you are having, maybe you want me to walk you through the entire interview process, make sure to check out Land Your Dream Job. Land Your Dream Job is a short mini course I made that will walk you through how to land your upcoming interview and your upcoming teaching position in a single weekend. I walk you through everything from researching the district that you might want to apply to, to applying, to following up, and everything in between, like what to wear, how to prepare, and everything like that. So make sure to check that out. All right, if you found this video helpful or you found this week's content helpful, make sure to give it a like or subscribe. That way, content like this can reach other teachers who might find this information helpful. As always, remember we are stronger together and I will see you in the next one, teacher bestie. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. I hope that you were able to take away some value that will help you thrive inside and out of the classroom. It would mean the world to me if you could take five seconds right now and leave a review on this podcast. And if you found this podcast especially helpful, make sure to take a screenshot of this episode right now and tag me on your socials to let me know you're listening. As always, remember that we are stronger together with all the love in the world, Helena, aka the President teacher. See you next time, teacher bestie.